Good evening, everybody. Or Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today is Final Fantasy XIV rerun day. It's Nivlu polling day, and I wanted to get this day started by telling you guys about why I am not going to be skipping Thancred. Um, I've heard a lot going around about this guy and about um, Yishtola and these Final Fantasy XIV characters, and I wanted to give you guys my opinion on Thancred, my opinion on Yishtola. Yishtola? Yeah, let's, let's go with Yishtola. Sounds good. And uh, my opinion on why I won't be passing on Thancred. So, to start, just get Yishtola. Like, her shards are super easy to get. They were super easy to get the first time. If you weren't playing back then, just get them. I think you can just buy them with Gil or something. Even if you don't max her, just get her shards, and then you have them. And if you're building up a new account, cool. You have her shards, and if you ever need her for the tower or for some PvE stuff, or you want to get really froggy with her in arena or something, you have the shards. It doesn't hurt to get them, especially because they are so accessible. But what I really want to talk about today is Thancred, and how I think a lot of people are undervaluing what he brings or thinking about him in the wrong way. Um, I personally view Thancred as more of a support character than I do as a tank or as a true DPS. To me, he's like Cecil, but a different, maybe better version of Cecil. Um, here's why I say that. Thancred has bruiser stats. Um, he's not a tank because he can't generate his own hate, but he's really, really great to have along with the units we have in the game that can generate their own hate. And I'm going to show you why right here. Uh, we're going to look at five different units. And we're going to look at those units' base defense skills, what they can raise their defense to with their support skills. We're going to look at what they can get out of gear for defense, what Golem can bring to them as an Esper, and then what Thancred can do to him with one, one ability he has called Heart of Stone. So to start, we're going to look at Engelbert. Engelbert has a base defense of 29. He can buff his defense by 12 with his support skills. If you're wearing a defense platinum armor, even at plus zero, which is pretty accessible to a lot of people, especially if you did your class matches or you've been doing some manual PvP, you can probably buy one recipe or two recipes of platinum armor and try to get that shield type with 20 defense. If not, you can get an 18 defense golden armor or something. But I'm using the 20 defense platinum armor as my example here. All right, so there's 20 from gear. You can get 15 from golem. And then Thancred has a heart of stone ability he can cast that gives the target 25 armor for three turns, 25. What? So, Engelbert, with this buff on, and the gear and espers I laid out, has 101 defense. That seems pretty good. Uh, Engelbert's pretty slow, too, so three turns of Engelbert having 101 defense is like five turns of people hitting Engelbert with 101 defense. That seems really, really good to me, and I'm pretty excited to try Thancred out with an Engelbert in like a light slashing composition or something, maybe with Ramza or any of these other light element people that we have. And yeah, that seems pretty good. Okay, but that's Engelbert. We already know Engelbert's like a god tier physical tank. Let's look at some other units and what Thancred's buff can do to them. Let's look at Agrius next. Agrius, who is, is who I've said is like the queen of tanks right now, only has a base defense of eight has 12 from her support, like Engelbert, can get 20 more from gear, 15 more from her Esper, and 25 from Thancred, and she's at 80 defense. That's, that's terrifying to me. An 80 defense Agrius walking around is scary. Slap a few resists on top of that, this girl already is hard to kill. She's going to be insanely hard to kill with a three turn 25 defense buff from Thancred. Now, he prioritizes the target with the most hate with this buff. 
um, I had to like ask some people in my guild about this and they confirmed it for me that he'll target somebody with like vow of love on because they have that hate or like Dwayne he'll target Dwayne because Dwayne has that passive hate or think of somebody like rain who I'm not even gonna be talking about on my chart here but physical tank rain would sure love 25 more defense Ooh, oh man okay anyway Agrius can get to 80 now let's go to an MR character, our good friend Mont Leonis, with his 25 base defense. You basically don't even need to look at the rest of it, because he's exactly like Engelbert across the board. But again, with that defense plat armor, 97 defense Mont. I'm excited about that. Because Mott is slow, like Engelbert. I don't really want him taking a whole bunch of turns. I want him being kind of stationary with all that defense and keeping that buff on. But Mott has move four and jump two. And on this map we're about to go to, it looks really wide to me and it looks like somebody who can navigate that terrain is gonna be really useful. So I'm pretty hyped to throw Mott on that map, throw a Thancred buff on him, have Mott just run out there and have all these people just like laying into him for negligible amounts of damage and then being frustrated because they lost to Mott. Um, that seems pretty fun to me. And all right, anyway, let's look at Dwayne next because a lot of people in global just got Dwayne. Uh, Dwayne is a good target, is a good friend for Thancred because Dwayne can bring that natural hate into the fight. So Thancred will like to cast his buff on him. And Dwayne can bring or Dwayne brings 10 defense base. He can give himself 15 through support skills, which is more than our other units. He can get that 20 from gear, that 15 from Esper, and then the 25 from Heart of Stone puts Dwayne at 85. You're talking legit tank stats here for Dwayne, who's somebody I haven't even really considered a legit tank yet. Now, this does not cover for his inability to generate hate past his first, you know, passive hate. And I still think that really hurts Dwayne and kind of makes him a fringe tank. You really want your tanks to be able to generate hate in some meaningful way. But 85 defense Dwayne sounds like somebody that's going to be really, really annoying to deal with. Maybe you run Dwayne, you run Agrius, you put Vow on Agrius, and Thancred's first two turns are throwing this buff on both of them, and they just walk out there with their 80 and 85 defense and just truck everybody. And that just seems scary to me. That seems really scary. All right. Interesting one last here. I'm going to throw Kilfay on the board. Kilfay brings eight base defense. She can give herself 12 more defense through support. She can get 18 defense with a platinum robe. She can get 15 from the Esper, plus 25 Heart of Stone. And here you have Mage Kilfay running around with 78 defense. Now, does it make a lot of sense to put Kilfay and Thancred in the same group? Maybe not. Like, maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense. But Tank Kilfay, which there's going to be a video on Tank Kilfay in the Let's Talk Tank series because I think she is also borderline a tank. But Spellblade Kilfay with Taunting Spell likes slashing up. Uh, Thankred likes slashing up. Maybe there is some strange combination where you have a Kilfay Thankred comp and you have 78 defense Kilfay. Now, so far. Engelbert's been the only one in this group who could push his number north of 100, right? And he barely did. He got to 101. And again, that's considering a 20 defense plat armor, which not everybody has. And there's a little bit of luck involved in getting that. So let's look next at three vision cards here. These three vision cards give the unit wearing them defense. The obvious one is uh, Leonis Castle. People have been using this card since the beginning of the game. It gives 15 more defense. So, okay, now with 15 more defense, almost everyone from our last group is at or above 100. Only Kilfay and Agrius don't get there with that. And Agrius is at 95 and Kilfay's at 93. Oh, really good. Now, that card doesn't bring a lot to the rest of your group. So what are some other ones? Well, there's Chocobo which gives 10 defense to the person wearing it and agility to your whole group. It's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Then there's uh, one of my favorite vision cards here, uh, Lilith's vision card, which is my favorite for a lot of reasons, not just the art, 
but uh, 10 defense to the person wearing it, and then slashing attack up to your whole group. These are very, very accessible cards because they're MR cards, or in the case of Leona's Castle, just an R card, I think. Pre pretty much everybody has that card maxed out. So you throw on the ability to get some more defense from vision cards, and defense tanking seems really viable to me with Thancred's 25 defense buff. I mean, it was viable before. People have been running defense tanks this whole time. I just think that skill alone makes me excited for Thancred. Like, I have all these team cops floating around in my head. I'm going to be doing arena videos with this guy. And I haven't really heard a lot of positive things about him. Just that, oh, he doesn't live up to the height of hype of the double cost units. Yeah, he's not Dwayne. Dwayne's kind of a brain dead character like he has a lot of defense he has a lot of attack and he walks out there like agrius and disables everybody good job i mean it's like you just throw it it's like throwing orlando out there back in the day i enjoy making comps with a little bit of like a theme to them or a little bit of planning involved and so yeah man thankard makes me excited i am not skipping thankard and as far as advising other people to pull Thancred, I don't think we're going to have to pull them. Like, I I remember watching a Cabbage video months and months ago when JP got the re-release of the Final Fantasy XIV event, and he was just getting, like, there's this, like, token system where you can just get Thancred shards, and at the beginning of the video, I think Cabbage was like, I don't know if I'm going to max Thancred, blah, 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 and then he just kept getting Thancred shards for free, and I think he ended up maxing him because it was just so easy. You guys, if you can max this unit for very little Vizior investment or for very little hardship, absolutely do it. Like, he is a double cost unit who's not as strong as Dwayne or not as strong as Ruinstern. Tr truth. That's just the truth. But is he really cool? And does he have a lot of, like neat skills like heart of stone i think heart of stone's a great skill and i'm super excited to get this guy so that's why i'm not passing on thancred and i'm advising people who especially might not have a super deep roster if this guy is easy to get and max out you should do it and because if you have mont you might be able to make mont into a god tier physical tank with this guy um and that's pretty cool so those are my two cents I don't know if maybe you guys think I'm crazy. Maybe you think I'm dumb. I don't know, but I'll prove or I will give my theories a run in the arena as soon as I get Thancred maxed and we'll see if I'm crazy or not. So I hope this video was cool. It was a pretty short one tonight. Uh, good luck on your polls to everybody who's polling. Good luck farming the event to everybody. If you have any questions, you need to know anything, hit me up in the comments here. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video.